Walking out in the soybeans. They're actually quite tall. So yeah, I just came out to check the soil moisture sensors in the soybean fields that I have. It's not as hot as the corn field. <laughs> Definitely hotter in there. I'm sweating a whole bunch more. I mean, it's still kind of hard to walk through, but I don't have to bend over and wear a mask and a long sleeve shirt to keep the pollen off of me. I usually do wear a long sleeve shirt just to protect myself from the UV rays. But again, this so these soybeans are tall. Now I'm walking over on the no cover crop side and it does seem like it's slightly taller, which we've seen that most of the season. And then 2018 we saw kind of a similar thing where this side was like a week ahead of the other side, but then that side out yielded this side. So interesting things to look at. One benefit that does come from practicing uh, no tillage or minimum tillage is that when bad rain comes, when bad wind comes, your topsoil is not going to go anywhere because you haven't disturbed it. And when you disturb it, it, allow, it just breaks up the structure that was there and it makes it really susceptible to erosion via the wind or water. So then you see all your topsoil just washing away or blowing away off the field. Like an example of that is, I was out here two weeks ago and we were flying the drone, but we were trying to decide whether we should fly or not. And then we decided not to because there was a rainstorm coming. As soon as we packed up the drone, the storm got here and the wind was like 40 miles an hour, they said. And I looked over to where someone had tilled the field over there it was already planted and everything, but there was just a, a brown, a brown, brown cloud of just sediment blown off the field. And then looking at any of these other fields that they practice no-till on. And the soybeans were just kind of flipping in the wind, you know, nothing really blowing off the field. So it does help, especially keeping the, the topsoil there. And cover crops increase that even more. So instead of the soil just being bare, and no-till when you do both of them together you get the benefits of having cover crops out there as well as not disturbing the soil from practicing no-till so doing those things you're going to keep your topsoil and you're also going to improve your infiltration and who doesn't want that as i'm leaving the field just last couple thoughts for you adding on to the no-till using cover crops another management practice in conservation agriculture or regenerative agriculture is having diverse crop rotations or at least just having a crop rotation um, that's gonna give you benefits that aren't necessarily watching your soil run off the field but you're gonna see that in the different pathogens you can end or slow pest cycles you're also going to allow the soil to kind of rebuild itself as far as nutrient wise so if you just did corn that requires lots of nitrogen so planting soybeans or other leguminous crops after that would allow for more nitrogen to get put back in the soil because of that symbiotic relationship the legumes create with the bacteria and fungi in the soil.